dark portal of speculation was opened on Monday as a pop-up on the Blizzard launcher showed a TBC release date set for June 1st. But some intern was probably sweating bullets when this happened because it disappeared quicker than your HP against a one-shot rogue. We also got a PTR update on Tuesday with some absolutely crazy PvP talents, so if you want to see what has Sidu smiling and why Waz is facepalming, make sure to stick around. And finally, we got some huge PvP updates for Season 1 of TBC, and over the weekend we saw the conclusion of the Arena World Championship as the top teams from EU and NA battled it out for $200,000 in prize money. So here we go guys, today we're here to break down this week's most important PvP news for Shadowlands and TBC, so get ready because you are not prepared for what's in store. But something you might be prepared for is answering a quick question. TBC Classic has a few minor differences already between the original Burning Crusade. One example is Arena 123 macros, which work on the beta but didn't work 14 years ago. What other features from the current game should be added to TBC Classic? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And whenever TBC or the next Shadowlands patch launches, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow to bring you up to speed on everything you need to know for the new meta. Our website features class guides and matchup breakdowns designed by some of the best players in the world. Our videos teach you everything you need to know to improve your skill and rating in Arena and feature high-level commentary that you won't find anywhere else. So if you want to stay ahead of the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Going into our 9.1 PTR updates, Blizzard released some new patch notes that sent the community into a complete mess. Starting off was a new PvP talent for hunters called Tranquilizing Darts, which will reduce enemy buffs every time they interrupt a spell or use Tranquilizing Shot, making it especially powerful into druids by removing HOTs. On paper, this seems really good, with the ability to reduce the duration of things like HOTs, Alter Time, Combustion, or Dark Soul with two separate spells. Hunters are also getting a potentially broken bow from PvE that grants them an entire legendary power, though it remains to be seen if this will work in PvP. Demon Hunters also got a new PvP talent called Blood Moon, which will give them an AoE dispel with their Consume Magic. While this might seem OP, it likely won't see much play given how bloated Demon Hunter PvP talents are already. Reverse Magic, Detainment, and Mortal Rush are too good to pass up right now. By far, the most controversial changes were to Paladins, with both Rhett and Holy getting a new PvP talent called Judgments of the Pure. This talent can be used by Rhett Paladins to dispel important CC like polymorphs and freezing traps on their healers simply by casting a judgment after the CC lands. Upon initial testing, it even works with Divine Toll and with the Ringing Clarity Conduit. You can dispel multiple things with a single Divine Toll. Combine that with it working through LOS and you have a pretty broken ability. It might also be used by Holy Paladins to AoE dispel their partners out of AoE fears and Novas, though it is slightly RNG since the dispel effect is random. Next, we have a change to Lawbringer, which no longer works in the Red Paladin's target, but will instead do more damage to secondary targets. Previously, if a Rhett Paladin maintained Lawbringer on three targets, Lawbringer would have done a total of 15% damage by hitting each enemy for 5% of their HP. With this change, the Rhett's main target takes no damage from Lawbringer, but the two other targets with Lawbringer applied will each take 10%, resulting in a total of 20% damage. Overall, this makes the talent much stronger for cleaving, but weakens it in situations where the Rhett only cares about single target damage. Vengeance Aura has also been redesigned to only give crit chance and no longer gives additional holy damage. Damage. This overall is a good change considering how high Rhett Paladin Burst is at the moment. Rhett saw another minor nerf to Aura of Reckoning, now only gaining one additional stack from crits instead of two. This means that Rhett's will get less frequent wings procs overall in Arena, but it will likely remain one of their best talent options. The ultimate Retribution talent was also reworked a bit, now allowing Rhett Paladins to res a teammate if they kill an enemy player within eight seconds. This probably won't see much use in Arenas, but is definitely something that could be utilized in RBGs. Lights Grace was also changed for Holy Paladins, giving it more upfront damage reduction every time Holy Light is used. Now though, instead of buffing Holy Light healing, it will instead buff Flash of Light, which means that it will make Paladins less mana efficient overall. This is slightly punishing, since Paladins currently struggle with mana, and with last week's PTR nerfs to Divine Favor, Paladin mana bars are getting destroyed once again. Disc Priests were excited over Tuesday's changes, getting some important damage and atonement buffs along with a new PvP talent. Inner Light and Darkness is a new option available for Priests, and allows them to switch between an atonement or mana reduction buff during arena. This will synergize well with a 20% overall buff to atonement in PvP, allowing them to prioritize more globals into doing damage. This came with a nerf to ultimate radiance, which is a fairly welcome change since it is one of the most frustrating abilities to deal with no matter if you are the priest or their opponents. With a redesign to Searing Light and Trinity, Disc Priests will be getting big damage increases overall to Smite and Penance, which will hopefully solidify them as the damage-based healer once again. 
Holy Priests were also excited on Tuesday with some of their redesigns to some of their PvP talents. Cardinal Mending was reworked, and instead of Prayer of Mending healing for 10% of someone's HP, it will simply heal for 50% more and have a longer jump range. Flash Heal was also buffed by 15%, and both of these changes together give Holy Priests some much needed throughput, which is where they generally struggle in Arena. These buffs were slightly offset by a nerf to Miracle Worker and a nerf to Greater Fade from 4 seconds to 3 seconds for both Holy and Shadow. Overall, we think this is a healthy change for the game, as Greater Fade is arguably one of the best PvP talents in the game overall and has super high value in this burst heavy meta. Enhancement and Elemental Shamans got a new PvP talent called Season Winds, which will give them 20% damage reduction to the spell school that they interrupt with Wind Shear. This is especially good against spells like Chaos Bolt and I Beam since they have multiple spell schools. Overall, this seems like a really good talent, especially if we see more spell cleaves next season. It will likely be the default talent choice against Warlocks and Shadow Priests since they primarily use one spell school. It remains to be known whether it is good into Frost and Fire Mages since most interrupts are likely used on Polymorph and not their primary damage school. Resto Shamans also got a new PvP talent called Living Tide, which will give them a much stronger defensive option. Currently, with Healing Tide Totem having a 3 minute cooldown, it is rare that it gets used more than once per game. This change will give Resto Shamans a more flexible defensive option against shorter offensive cooldowns. Moving on to some TBC leaks, there was a bit of a scramble at the Blizzard headquarters this Monday as the launcher temporarily showed a TBC release date for June 1st. Jay Allen Brack was likely on his way to the quality control team with his replica Frostmourne in hand, ready to add another intern's soul to his rune blade. Luckily for the intern, the release date mysteriously disappeared, but not before being screenshotted and posted all over the internet just moments later. With the community in panic, they did what they normally do and immediately asked Asmongold for his sage wisdom in these confusing times. And while there is plenty of speculation going around, there is one thing we all need to remember. Blizzard is more predictable than a 1400 rogue using their interrupts. Virtually every expansion, including the release of Classic WoW, happens in the fall or winter, usually to boost fourth quarter sales. So, what should we make of this leak? Well, I wouldn't put my money on the expansion dropping with only two months of beta. There is still a lot of raid testing that needs to be done, so I wouldn't count on the Dark Portal opening so soon. Some more important TBC news dropped as a blue post revealed rating requirements for gear in Season 1. Legs will require a rating of 1550, chest 1600, head 1700, weapon 2050, and shoulders 2200. This is slightly different than the launch of original TBC as rating requirements didn't exist until Season 3. On top of that, Blizzard will be using a completely different MMR system, saying that they will be adopting a one similar to 2008. Arena teams will start at zero rating, which is different than the original 1500. What this likely means is that players will be highly encouraged to stay on the same team the entire season, as leaving teams will be a huge punishment, especially considering that the title system will revert to how it was prior to Season 15 in Mists of Pandaria, with Gladiator and Rank 1 being awarded to the top 0.5% and 0.1% of teams on the ladder. A new Rank 1 title is also dropping for Season 1. Infernal Gladiator will be rewarded to the top 0.1% of teams in each bracket, so the boomer meme of being Rank 1 in Season 1 has finally come full circle. And in more news from TBC, the Tornadoes in Nagrand Arena will be making their arena debut in Season 1. In case you haven't seen clips from the beta or didn't play WoW during the Bronze Age, Tornadoes would literally spawn in the middle of Nagrand Arena during competitive games. This adds to the lengthy mythological list of crazy RNG that used to be possible in PvP. To be honest though, I welcome the Tornadoes into the arena because they generate more Twitch clips than a peekaboo stream after a few White Claws. And in case you missed it, be sure to check out our BC Arena tier list, where we will show you the best classes for arena in Season 1. Even if you haven't seen it, we want to know your predictions for the meta in Season 1. Is there a comp that you think will be absolutely broken at the start of the expansion? I personally think Enhancement Shaman Rogue is being heavily slept on. It is a caster's nightmare and might be an answer to all the mages we see early in Season 1. And rounding out our news updates, we got to see the conclusion of Season 1 for the Arena World Championship in both the EU and NA regions. On the European side, Skillcapped started off strong, beating Method EU in their first series 3-0. Method would then go on a rampage through the lower bracket, beating both Reload Esports and Creed in the process. They would then find themselves in the run back against Skillcapped in the Grand Finals. The first few games went in Skillcapped's favor, as their Shattered play was able to do really well into RPS and RMP. Method EU was not knocked down easily though, as they mirrored Skillcapped for the remainder of the series, taking two games on match point as we headed into game six. Then on Dalaran Sewers, Skillcapped managed to secure victory, scoring a deep dampening kill onto Tazia. 
Over in North America, Cloud9 and Method NA would win both of their round one matches and face off in winner's finals. It was there that Method would defeat Cloud9 3-2 as OTK and Golden Guardians faced off in the lower bracket. While Method NA was waiting in the grand finals, Cloud9 would defeat fan favorite OTK to secure themselves a rematch against Method in the conclusion of the AWC Season 1. This series was incredibly close, with Channimals narrowly escaping death and Drain lifing his way into Game 7. There, both teams fought tooth and nail. Only for Method to land a clutch kill onto Cusby in deep dampening. With Season 1 coming to a close, we saw some of the best games ever for WoW Esports, so be sure to check out the official WoW channel in case you missed any games. And that's our PvP news roundup for this week. Once again, both PTR and Classic TBC are constantly getting updated. It can be overwhelming, but we are here to help and let you know exactly what you should expect from the next patch. The game is constantly evolving, so be sure to look for more PvP news in next week's roundup when we get another PTR update. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to stay up to date on all future uploads, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. We will be keeping you up to date on any other major patch developments so you don't want to miss out. For now, take care.